This week, enhance your time-lapse video by using filters, adjustment layers, and blending modes with Adobe After Effects. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. This episode is brought to you by Adorama. If you're looking for photography, video, imaging, or tech needs, be sure to check out Adorama.com. Now that we've developed our raw time-lapse video files, let's go ahead and put on some finishing touches and then we can export the final product. And I'm just going to finesse this with a couple of adjustment layers. One of the first ones I like to add is a quick blur. So let's just toss on fast blur. And this is just like Photoshop where you have adjustment layers, except now you can use filters. So I'll just name that by pressing return. And we'll apply a nice fast blur. And then we could change its blending mode. Something gentle like soft light. Now the advantage with that is it's going to help hide some of the noise and further boost the filmic look. You see there without, with. Now I'm going to take that down just a bit because it's strong. So we'll set that to a 50% opacity. And I'll take the blur down to 10. And that seems to be working very nicely. It's getting rid of some of that rain noise. And it's really punching the shadows. Let's go ahead and add another layer here. We'll do an adjustment layer. And this one's going to be black and white. You might be wondering, why are you using a black and white adjustment layer for a color image? Well, thanks to blending modes, I could really push this and boost the contrast in the image selectively. It's really quite cool. So let's just type in black and white. There it is. We'll drop that on the adjustment layer. All right, I've applied a black and white adjustment. And notice that I can selectively adjust the different areas. For example, I could pull that blue down, really putting contrast in the sky. So nobody said it had to just be a simple black and white. I can go after the individual areas adding emphasis. That looks really cool. So before and after. Look at how we have a nice high contrast image. I'll then switch that to the luminosity blending mode and I get sort of a cool bleach bypass look. And then I can adjust the overall opacity. So I like how that looks there. It really just brings out the sky and is punching up the contrast in the boat, which is very cool. All right, let's finish this out with one more color adjustment. And it's my favorite, the vibrance adjustment. Great controls over saturation selectively. Bring out that blue sky. Punch up the saturation just a little. And you see that's really just rounding it out nicely. And I'll finish this out with a power window. I'll add a new solid, select a shadow color, and click OK. And then grab my rounded ellipse tool there, and I'll just double click to add a mask. Now the mask is backwards, but that's OK. I can click Invert, twirl it down, and just crank on the feather. That gives it a nice gentle edge. We'll set that to multiply, which is the correct mode for a shadow. And then just lower the opacity a bit, T for opacity. And that gives us that nice power window. Let's turn that off and on, and you'll see the benefit of that vignette. There you have the finished shot. Now, working entirely raw like this is very processor intensive. So if you don't have a fast machine, just skip the importing of the raw sequence and batch process using Lightroom or Photoshop. But I like having this flexibility because remember, inside of After Effects, I could jump right back to the camera raw engine. If I just select my raw file there and press Command or Control E, there's camera raw. And I can work with it and tweak the image. So if I want a little more clarity, punch that up, click OK, and it will propagate and update the file. There it is. It's loading in the new results, and it's updated. This is all set. I'll just choose to add that to the render queue, check my settings, and we can choose from a variety of output presets. 
I'd use the H.264 Blu-ray if going to the web for a site like Vimeo or YouTube works really nicely. Or you can load in your own presets with After Effects. Name the file, save your project, click render, and be prepared to walk away for a bit. Now, this is intense. It will take my machine about 15 to 20 minutes to render out this shot. That's because it's a long shot with a lot of raw images. But as you see, the before and after, going from that washed out shot to really bringing in the color, developing it with camera raw, and then further enhancing it using adjustment layers, this just looks great. And this is why I love this all raw workflow. Thanks for joining us. My name is Rich Harrington. Be sure to head on over to the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find a bunch of tips and techniques about time lapse and watch some of our past episodes in our time lapse series. This is the pinnacle of post processing. So if it seemed too hard, check out some of our earlier episodes where we take a nice look at some easy, streamlined workflows. But if you want total control, this is the way to do it. Thanks for joining me. Want to get the most out of your Adorama photography equipment? Visit our Learning Center where you can read popular articles, how-to tips, buying guides, and product reviews. 